Okay, we got a good one today. So, solving rational equations. It's the end of our journey with rational equations and functions and expressions. So basically what it comes down to is we want to solve for x, and it's just, we're just adding and subtracting uh, fractions. But the problem is one of our fractions has x in the denominator, which makes the whole thing a big pain. Okay? But if you remember when you added and subtracted fractions, you want a common denominator. And the simplest way to get a common denominator is just take all of your denominators and multiply them all together. Right? So I'm gonna look, I have x plus three, six and 18. So I could multiply every fraction by all three of those numbers. But if we wanna make this a little bit simpler, we say, well, 18 is a multiple of six. So instead of multiplying by 18 and multiplying by six, we can just multiply by 18. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna say our least common denominator is 18, times x plus three. I'm not actually sure if that's the least common denominator, but that's a common denominator that's good enough. So I'm gonna take this value and I'm gonna multiply each of my three fractions by that, okay? So our first fraction is gonna be four times 18 x plus three over x plus three plus five times 18 x plus 3 over 6 equals 23 times 18 x plus 3 over 8. Okay, I know this seems like a lot because it is, right? That's okay. The whole reason we do this is now we should be able to simplify each of these three fractions so we no longer have fractions anymore like we see on our far left fraction, x over three times x over three, that's gonna cancel. And we're gonna be left with four times 18 is, is 72 plus, plus. So here we have 18 and six. So the six will cancel out, 18 divided by six is three. So we have five times three is 15 times x plus three equals, and then on the right hand side, we have 18 on top and bottom, those cancel out. So we have 23 times x plus three. So a little bit better, most importantly, we don't have a fraction anymore. And now we're just solving for x, okay? So a couple ways you could go about doing this. You could distribute the 15 and the 23, but hopefully, hopefully, you recognize since these are the same amounts, that we have 15 x plus threes on the left, 23 x plus threes on the right, we can actually combine these two together. So if I move this to the right hand side, I can say if I take away 15 x plus threes from both sides, right, we have 72, this all cancels out, equals 23 minus 15 is eight, x plus threes, okay? And then you can say, ah, well, I can distribute now. Or you could say, well, 72 is divisible by eight. What if, what if I just divide both sides by eight? So 72 divided by eight is nine. These eights cancel out. We have x plus three. And now this is, uh, this is not so bad. So minus three to both sides and we get x equals six. And then there's our answer. We could, we could plug this in, six plus three is nine, four nines plus five, six. I don't know, that sounds like it could equal 23 over 18. That's the basic idea, right? We look for a common denominator, cancel out all of our denominators so we have nothing, no fractions remaining, and then we just solve for x. I know this seems like a whole lot of steps, but you'll start to recognize uh, a lot of the work follows the same pattern. Like when we subtracted an x minus three from an x minus three, you're gonna see that a lot, right? So keep these steps in mind, and then this won't be quite so bad.
Okay, well, that's one of the cases you're gonna see. Let's look at the other kind, which is potentially more of a pain or less of a pain, depending on your feelings towards black guys. So this one we have 2x minus 1 and x plus 4. So if I'm looking for a least common denominator, I know I'm going to have 2x minus 1 times x plus 4. Right? So that'll get rid of the denominator on the left-hand side. And then I'm going to hope really hard that if I were to FOIL this, that I'll get exactly 2x squared plus 7x minus 1. I'm going to cross my fingers. So let's take a look. So let's see. So first term, uh, this is 2x squared. Outer, 2x plus 4, or times 4. This is 8x. Inner, so this is minus x. And then last, minus 4. This is 7x, and that is, that checks out, right? Thank goodness. So what that means is that if I use this as my denominator, 2x minus 1, x plus 4, it's going to cancel out all of this in the denominator on the right-hand side. Bonus, okay? So I'm going to multiply each of my fractions by 2x minus 1 times x plus 4. All right, so let's do that. This is really the... The work part is having to write all of this down. 2x minus 1, x plus 4, all over 2x minus 1, plus 3 times, and don't forget the original values, 2x minus 1, uh, x plus 4. Some of you are probably saying, do we have to write all of this down every time? And I'd say, yeah. For now, since we're new at this, it's not going to kill you. Erase this for. So 21, 2x minus 1, x plus 4, all over 2x squared plus 7x minus 4. Also, this looks super impressive. You write all this down on a piece of paper, so no one walks by. They'll be like, this kid's a genius. Look at all this work they're doing. All right, so let me cancel what we can. So on the far left, we have 2x minus 1. So those cancel out. So we have x times x plus 4. Our middle term here, the x plus 4s cancel out. So we have 3 times 2x minus 1 equals. And then remember we said all of this is equivalent to all of that. So all that goes away. All we're left with is just at 21, okay? So let's see. I can't combine these two terms in the parentheses, so I'm just gonna distribute. So let's see what we'll Let's go green. So x times x is x squared uh, plus 4x plus, same thing here, 3 times 2 is 6x. Uh, 3 times negative 1 is minus 3. And hmm, let's skip one tiny step, right? Since I see an uh, x squared, this is going to be a quadratic. Anytime I want to solve quadratics, I want to bring everything to the same side, right? So I'm going to take this positive 21, and I'm going to do, we say minus 21 to both sides. So minus 21, and then this is going to equal 0 over here, okay? So we combine our like terms. So x squared plus 10x, this is minus 24 equals 0. So then I see if I can factor this. So let's see, multiplies to negative 24, adds to 10. So let's see, 12 and 2. So we can say x plus 12, x minus 2 equals 0. And then remember for this one, since we're looking for solutions, not the factors, if our factors are positive 12 and negative 2, then our solutions are going to be the opposite. So x will either be negative 12 or x will be positive 2. So again, it's a lot of work, but nothing too unfamiliar. Really, the only part that's, that's new-ish to us is this in blue, where we find the common denominator multiply each of our terms by that common denominator so we can cancel out common factors.
right? Once we do all that, we get rid of the fractions. This is just solving, solving for x. You've been doing that for two years now, right? But make sure you show your work. Take your time with it. It's only nine questions. Just take your time. Work carefully, and you'll do great. All right. Bye.